Hey guys, I'm just about to take the Legend kayak for a test paddle out through the surf. First time I've taken it offshore. This uh, Legend kayak is basically the plastic equivalent of the offshore fishing kayaks that come out of South Africa. Hey, welcome along to my series of kayak reviews. My name's Jason, I've been in the kayak industry for the last 15 years, and in this time working in the kayak industry, I've had access to some amazing products. And the great thing about working in the industry, I get to play with these products a lot, so I've got some really good feedback. I spent a lot of time in the water with a lot of the products that I'm reviewing, so I can give you some pretty honest feedback. And hopefully in these reviews, we cover all the questions that you might have but if I've missed anything, make sure you leave a comment and I'll answer straight away. And if you find these reviews useful, it really helps me if you share it around. So hit the subscribe button, share, comment, you know what to do. Let's get stuck into the review. Yo, what's up, buggers? In today's video... And after you've checked out what I have to say, be sure to go and see what Captain Gingerbeard, the legend himself, has to say about this kayak. He spent a lot more time in it, so he'll give you a little bit more detail than I actually managed to go through. It's a great review and I'll leave a link in the description and somewhere at the end of the video. So that concludes my trial of the legend. I've paddled on the flat water, I've paddled out in the ocean now. Yeah, I'm happy to make a, a decision based on those two paddles. So I'm just about to take the Legend kayak for a test paddle out through the surf. First time I've taken it offshore. This uh, Legend kayak is basically the plastic equivalent of the offshore fishing kayaks that come out of South Africa. It's plastic, so it's durable, slightly heavier. Has the big center well, which most plastic manufacturers haven't managed to master this one. So I've got a huge amount of area in here. Well, we can fit a small child in there. <laughs> it's two really big tuna. And I'll get you close enough and you can bail out. And there's my rods. The tips are on the bungee. Got some Velcro here, hold the rods, although they're going to be sitting low in the water. So if this water comes in this hatch, they're going to get wet. This is the fish bag, which does attach here somewhere. I'm taking two rods out. There might be some tuna out there, but if um, I can't find any birds working, I'm just going to take it for some runs in the surf and see how it handles. We'll see if I can handle it. Because just after hitting this wave, the foot pedal pops out. I'm trying to get the foot pedal back in in time before the next wave hit me, but I couldn't get there and the kayak was not in the right position. I literally copped the weight of all that white water, which sent me backwards, buried the stern of the kayak and sent me underneath, as you can see here. I've since then spoken to the guys at Legend and that's a design feature that I've changed. This was one of the earlier models. Uh, Waterline length is good, it's, it's got some hull speed, it's probably about a K to K and a half faster than the Profish Reload, but it's still as heavy so you still have to put as much effort to get it up to speed. Uh, there was a bit of wind out there today, not a lot, so it, didn't, it did handle fine in the wind. Have a look, see how that handled. Now no doubt that capsize didn't help with the water situation getting into the hatch, however it's a surf kayak, I would have expected that hatch to be a little bit more watertight, so that may be something they've fixed, but if they haven't, I'd suggest anyone that buys one upgrade to some better waterproofing, maybe some rubber around the seal and some extra tight straps. I don't know what you do with these skis to make them even more watertight, because there was a lot of water that came in there. Certainly needed to get that out before I lift it up and put it on the roof. I mean, I'm not blaming every one of these skis are going to be like that. Every manufacturer gets it wrong every now and again. I've worked with plenty of them now, so none of them are perfect, so this could just be a, a bad ski with a leak somewhere, but there's a lot of water in that hatch, all my gear got wet. So in this sequence, what I'm doing is trying to see how the kayak handles coming in back to the beach sideways. Sideways is generally how I'll come back to the beach with a fully loaded kayak, and particularly when you're really close to the beach and it's dumping waves. So it's good to test out, see how stable this kayak is in a side brace, because a long kayak like this, unless you can keep yourself in front of the wave, you're generally going to bury the nose and it's going to pitch pole you, so you're better off coming in sideways with a brooch sideways. The kayak handles this very well, as you'll see. It's a lot more stable than I thought, and I generally have thigh braces for this and I didn't need them. 
he's very stable so if you're a big guy or very new to this game you're gonna certainly be comfortable out there because it's a very stable very very stable ski Me personally, I'd certainly be putting a rod holder up the front so I can somewhere to park my rod while I'm changing lures and while I land the fish, etc. It's something that's just that style of ski I'm not used to, so there's a few things I'd do differently to set it up for me. Um, another thing to note, while it can be car topped easily enough, throw it on your shoulder and throw it on the roof, um, it is heavy, so be warned. A side loader or something would be better. It sits flat on its hull, as you'll see there when I load it on the roof, uh, which doesn't appear to, to compromise the integrity of the hull. The market this kayak probably fits is someone who's really keen to spend a lot of time offshore and they have to paddle through the surf a lot but they can't quite justify spending that little bit more on a fiberglass um, ski. This will be a good stepping stone. It is heavier. It's going to be slower through the surf. This one took on a lot of water in the in the foot wells which slowed me down in that surf zone. You don't really want to be slowing down in that surf zone because once you stall you're in trouble. Where my, my other Viking reload's got larger scupper holes, uh, it drains a lot faster because it's a good ski. Someone's put a lot of thought into it. Um, I just think if someone that's buying it, they end up loving the offshore environment, they will eventually upgrade and end up in a, in a fiberglass ski. So this is probably a good place to, to start, I guess, if all you're doing is offshore through surf. Um, my other kayak, Profish Reload, a little bit more of an all-rounder if I want to go in the estuaries and the rivers. I can, I can take that. This ski's a little bit big and cumbersome for that. Ultimately, would I own one? Uh, no, probably not. I've done plenty of time in plastics. I enjoy my plastic ski for what it is, my kayak for what it is. Um, yeah, no, I wouldn't own one. The uh, next upgrade for me would be into fiberglass or carbons because I want lighter and I want faster. I want to thank the guys who loaned it to me. Appreciate the chance to try a new ski. Always love playing with new toys. And, you know, it's fun being on the water regardless. It goes beep. Dead, dead, dead. Beep. Dead, dead, dead. Hey guys, Tex Elvray here. And today, I'm going to explain how to get the eat.